All right, everyone, this is Narval Central coming back at you with another YouTube video. And I just want to go ahead and address the elephant in the room so far. Uh, Chris Parson, the four-star quarterback commit uh, with Florida State, has decommitted from the program. And this is something that Florida State fans have been kind of projecting for quite some time. I know that the downward spiral has been kind of at a, at a standstill. You even saw that when he officially visited Florida State. Um, he had still remained committed throughout the process. Um, he quit doing the no game day journals. There, there was a couple of different key factors there. Uh, the staff was even communicating to him that they wanted to take two quarterbacks because of Jordan Travis potentially graduating, and they didn't really like where that room was depth-wise at that point. So when you think about it in terms of that logistics, I'm not here to make this video because I want to downgrade Chris Parson by any means because he is a tremendous player. I respect him, uh, you know, through thick and thin with everything. And I even talked about my Instagram post about the decommitment. I turned off all the comments because the truth of the matter is fans can be cruel. Uh, this fan base is a little bit more toxic at times, and I get it. It's, it's a fluent game. Uh, everyone talks about how Chris Parson is going to run away from competition, other things and other factors like that. But, you know, I follow coaches, assistant coaches, support staff, players, recruits, everything like that, even parents. And when you look at logistics like that, where you're seeing grown adults um, talking about a kid's decision, how does that really look in terms of just the fan base in general? And, and what do those parents and everything think at that point? And I'm not here to, to say anything about Chris Parson because – like I said, he's got to make the best decision for him and his loved ones at the end of the day. And that's what everyone has to really understand. Florida State's going to be completely fine. Um, he decommitted today, which would be in July. So you're really looking at five months before early signing period that you're able to kind of get another quarterback in the fold. They're probably going to get two. Um, so their most targeted quarterbacks right now are Ricky Collins, a four-star commit out of Purdue or from Purdue. And then you also look at a guy that's um, four-star Brock Glenn. And those are the two quarterbacks that you got there. Brock Glenn seems to be the most attainable right now because he does have three predictions to Florida State. Now, Ohio State is something to worry about in that regard if they were able to kind of pursue and push later on in the process. But right now it seems like Florida State's kind of in the driver's seat. Um, Ricky Collins is a guy that he's from the New Orleans area but you just don't know if LSU is going to quite push. And a lot of people have told me uh, that maybe the LSU offer doesn't really mean anything anymore because they've waited so long to offer him and the new staff with Brian Kelly there. And it's just a lot of factors going into it. And, you know, he talks about how he wants to be committed to Purdue, but you just wonder how true that is because a lot of things are, you know, ever changing in recruiting. Like I've talked about before, it's a very fluent game. So really when you're looking at Chris Parson, uh, he was a very, very good representation of what Florida State is. You know, he had family ties there. Uh, there was a lot of good relationships. But the fact of the matter is, he was basically recruited by Coach Norvell and Coach Nillingham. Those were his two contacts of just everything going on. Uh, Tony Tokarts was actually not really involved in that recruitment. Um, but the really big factor in that, all of it is, is just familiarity. Uh, he felt as though, you know, there was some different – things going on there he wanted to part ways and he actually ended up officially visiting and visiting uh, Mississippi State and also SMU and those were two schools that you can really look at he recently got crystal balled over to Mississippi State and there's just a lot of different things going on you know with a lot of of just factors that Florida State's got to play into now I talked about this before in a couple of my articles that I have with fifth quarter and really, when you're looking at Florida State and quarterback recruiting, you look at Jeff Sims in the 2020 class, you turn around and have Luke Altmaier in the 21 class, and then Nico Marchio in the 22 class, and now Chris Parson in the 23 class. Um, it's just a lot of different factors that Florida State's kind of getting control of. Um, but the fact of the matter is, Florida State is 26 and 33 in their last five years. So you know, when is it going to become where Florida State is to be able to be a stabilizing you know, kind of uh, team that you could see at, you know, just a better level because Bobby Bowden built so much of this program from the ground up. Uh, you see Norvell is building this kind of uh, basically a culture set at Florida State. I know it, the standard is the standard, as Mike Alford said 
um, in his recent presser that he had. And I understand the frustrations. Mike Norvell is 8-12 and 12 in his last, you know, three seasons or two seasons at Florida State going into his third. And it's really important for Mike Norvell to be able to establish some kind of uh, continuity in his quarterbacks. And really, when you're looking at guys like that, you're looking at a Jordan Travis potentially graduating or leaving. you got Tate Rodemaker that's kind of underperformed in the bright lights, A.J. Duffy, and then Geno English. Uh, Geno English could be a scho- or walk on turned into a scholarship. We'll definitely see how that pans out. But, man, it's, uh, it's something. You know, Florida State's going to really have to dig deep and to be able to get some quarterbacks in here that fit the system. But nonetheless, though, it's all love for Chris Parson. I want him to do what's best for him and what's best for his family. Because at the end of the day, we're all Florida State fans. We want to see them great. We want to see recruits be successful in what they want to be, unless they're a cane or a gator. But, you know, just overall, I think that Florida State's uh, going to be doing a good job in this class of 23. I think there's a couple of roadblocks just simply because, as I've talked about before, these recruits are kind of waiting on some positive progress. I mean, this team has not really had it in the last five seasons, and you want to see more of a production standpoint. But, you know, we're going to have to see. I mean, you can't go 0-4 to start the season anymore. You really have to hit hit everything perfectly to be able to kind of get some of these major recruits to come in. But, you know, we'll, we'll definitely see because uh, Brock Glenn's going to probably be deciding in the month of uh, July, maybe early August. It just kind of depends on everything. And then I believe they're doing a recruiting event on July the 30th. So it's really exciting to see what Florida State's going to do on that aspect. But just overall, I'm super excited to see where they end up. I know it's a bit of a disappointment day. You know, a lot of people were kind of expecting this to come. They just didn't know when it was going to happen. Uh, just a lot of different factors in that. But don't blame Chris for anything of that. You know, he's got to do what's best for him and his family. So just overall, I think you just got to be supportive. Um, I understand kind of question, questioning the staff with this uh, sort of quarterback recruiting, I guess you could say. But I think it's going to be just fine. I don't think you're really going to have to too much worry about it. In terms of a comparison between Parson and Glenn, I do think Parson has the more livelier arm. Uh, he's got a little bit more dual threat ability. Uh, I think he's got more of a higher ceiling, but a lower floor than Brock Glenn. I think Brock Glenn is a more safer floor, less of a ceiling. I think he's more of like that Brady White type deal. He's more of a pocket passer with a little bit of scrambling ability. Uh, Both were in the Elite 11, and actually Chris Parson was the finalist. Glenn didn't really play as well. He played okay. I mean, it wasn't like he was terrible, but at the same token, you know, you have to kind of take it what it is. Now, I am saying that It is a comparable um, situation there. I think both of them are around the 90 composite ranking. So it really won't change anything for Florida State ranking-wise. But I believe right now with the Chris Parson uh, decommitment, we're actually at number 41 in the country. So there's going to be some bigger moves. I've actually talked about this in my other one about expecting fireworks for this 23 class. And there's going to definitely be some fireworks. And today has definitely been a firework day with uh, the decommitment of Chris Parson. It's ever-changing, man. It's, It's kind of a situation where you just have to take it with a grain of salt right now. It's only July. You have to get into the season to kind of figure out if this recruiting class is even going to stand still with everything. Because like you saw last season, we started off 0-4 and and everything kind of fell off the wheels at the end of the uh, early signing day. So we'll definitely see how everything pans out. But I hope everyone enjoyed the video today. Be sure to like the video, comment your thoughts. Try not to be too negative, but I understand people have to have their own thought process. So uh, just do whatever you need to. Just vent off every, every frustrations and emotions. But I do appreciate everyone for the love and the support. And as always, go Knowles.